first and foremost, I just want to welcome you all here and first hit that thumbs up. Do me a quick favor, hit that thumbs up, like this video. And for those of you watching from different places, if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. We're having a whole lot of conversations. We're in the fall now. I'm excited to just chop it up with some brothers from Christian hip hop and all across the Christian space. So without further ado, we got Cam in here. What's good, man? Yeah, what's popping? What's popping, man? What's going man. on? Glad to have you, man. I'm so glad. I always wanted to chop it up. I feel like this is a great time. You yeah. just released a double single. I was yeah, calling man. it an EP for so long, but because it felt <laughs> like it was just more than it just that. It like but, that, though. Yeah, it's a double single. Yeah. Man, talk to me about it. Um, It's called To Whom It May Concern, I'm Healing. Right. Where right. did you get that name from? Yeah. And what were some of the inspirations that led you to that? Yeah, man. I mean, basically, the title really is just... uh symbolic of this being like an open letter for me to just everybody that's been supporting me across this musical journey specifically i mean it's been literally two almost two years since i've released my own solo music and i know a lot of people have been saying like it don't feel like that but it really right. has been problematic my debut album that was the last time i dropped solo stuff to, to all my supporters i've been healing so that's kind of where, where the inspiration came from man that's dope yeah it's so the last release you did i believe was in uh, 2020, it was your uh, album, Problematic. It was your debut yeah. album, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. That's so, my baby right there. Yeah, man. It's a really good album. I, I remember Bro, listening I back it. to it. So, like, you came out with this album during the time mm -hmm. that was really hectic. We were, um, yeah. I think it was, like, right in the early stages still of, like, the pandemic, which, you know, it's a, a debate going on whether or not it's still a pandemic or not. But we're just going to say for the sake of argument <laughs> that uh, the early stage of the pandemic yeah, where yeah. it was just, like, everybody was, you know, afraid. It was a lot of stuff. You didn't know who to trust, what information to trust. It's and then plan. in the midst yeah. of that, we had a lot of rioting first. We had a lot of rioting at the Capitol. Yeah. We had the um, huge movement when it came to like police brutality and marches all over the country, every yeah. state, every major city and even smaller cities and things like that. So all these things are going on and you drop this project problematic, right? Yeah, at kind of yeah. like the height of all of this problematic stuff going time. On. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So talk to me about what happened from the time you released that project um, all the way up until you releasing this double single now and like what yeah. kind of, because you put out a letter and you were saying like there was a time mm -hmm. where you just really could, wasn't able to do much of anything musically. You just couldn't get yeah. yourself to make music. So talk to me a little bit kind of of the process that you kind of went through with that. Yeah. So really, I mean, to set the scene, of course, 2020, you know, that's the unspoken year. It's almost a cuss word. Yeah. Now, like that year. <laughs> <laughs> like, But um, nah, man. So leading up to the problematic album release, that was the end of October of 2020. Um, and really at that point, I was very close to where like my lowest mental point was like the whole year I had been kind of slowly declining, um, but was really unaware of that. And now was, we'll get into that in a little bit, but uh, yeah, the synopsis of really what was going on the last two years. It was just uh, that mental decline happening, being unaware of it, hitting a very, very low, low that was just abnormal from my normal baseline to how I am. Cause anyone who knows me, I'm a very happy, joyous, like, you know what I'm saying? I wake up with the joy of the Lord. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when I hit that low, low, that was kind of like the, eh, eh, something's going on here. And then of course, right. um, in that letter, I also referenced, or in the uh, first verse of To Whom It May Concern, I referenced having a dream um, that was kind of like the big wake up call to like, mm -hmm. you're really not okay right now, man. Something's going on. You need to go to God. You need to kind of figure this out. And from then, the next year really uh, was like the, the, the meat of that healing journey. Uh, you know what I'm saying? going through just reflecting on what led me there right processing how to how to move forward getting myself deeper in the community getting myself deeper into my relationship with god and just all these things that really brought me out of that that mental fog i was in and got me back to a place where i could create again so man that's what's up and that's that's a good place to be where you don't have that that fog just like the uncertainty yeah. of life where i think 2019 leading into the early part of 2020 uh, so many things just felt like were a given like you felt it was a given that you can go out to a place and yeah. uh not have to really worry about much of anything you can go right. to sports games you know sports outings Concerts, you can go to all, all type of different things you didn't have to think twice about you know anything like that but then you have this huge sickness and things that's just spreading over easily yeah. then you have uh all of these different mental health issues that came 
And some of these were always, some people always had them, but it wasn't a trigger, a triggering point or traumatic yeah, event that they sure. experienced that really brought it to the forefront. So I know for myself, there were a lot of things that I didn't know that I struggled with with my mental health, yeah. one being anxiety. I didn't know that until we hit this pandemic and then Man, toward the wild. very yeah. end. And I just identified that recently. It has been formally diagnosed, but I just realized some of the signs of like my behavior. I'm like, man, I'm a real yeah. anxious person, yeah, but I didn't know that. It. Yeah, yeah, it sure. hit me finally. So I, I can really empathize with that. But then all of these other things and um, being a young adult in this era is also different because we're navigating something that's unique to us, that's unique yeah. to a lot of people that have they haven't experienced in their own lifetimes, but us really trying to find ourselves uh, in Christ, mm -hmm. but also in like our gifts and talents, because we're both from you know the yeah. CHH community as artists trying yeah. to really find ourselves. And you had just, uh, I believe, were named one of the Rapzilla freshmen that year too, right? Yeah, 2020? In 2021. 2021. 20, yeah. Oh, I said 2021. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, got gotcha. you. So it was like right on the crust of kind of starting to come out or be able to be back outside. But like, man, what okay. you were talking about was spot on. Cause I feel like for me, um, coming into 2020, I was really at like a high, like, you know, we were on, we were on tour. Uh, we were doing an incognito oh, tour, yeah. me and the coach villains fam, uh, Mikey J, Johnny J, shout out all of them. But uh, we was on tour, tour was starting to pick up. We mm -hmm. had got back from like, I think a show in Dallas and everyone was feeling good, morale high. Everything shut down like a week later. And we were just wow. like, oh, so it was almost like the shock um, of that mixed with just being forced to stay at home and like have to just sit in, in whatever, you know, most times we mm -hmm. have things going on. Everybody got something going on in life at almost all times, but normally you can get yourself right. busy and kind of like, you know, melt or nurse it a little bit. Uh, but with that pandemic, it was like, we're just forced to sit in it. And, and when you're forced to sit with your thoughts for too long, especially for mm -hmm. me as an overthinker, uh, it, it gets, you know what I'm saying? It can get deep. Yeah. And then just so many different things were going on in my life. I had a family situation going on. Uh, everything with racial injustice that year was just, it just hit me completely different. Um, and then, you know, the job I was working, it was very, it was very like a mundane routine type type of thing. So all you stopped yourself kind of into going through the motions. Precise. You're just man. there, but not present. Like, like you exactly, know, exactly. No, I feel you. I can relate to, I can relate to that heavy in many different ways. Um, I want to talk to you about this quote that you've been sharing a lot. And so you probably already know where I'm going with So. A shout out to you, uh, even if this is just like, man, just really something that spoke to you in this time. Like, this yeah. is just like great branding because I remembered <laughs> this. I took this is something I took That's away fine. from the entire rollout, which is yeah. you can't hear what you're not real about. That's fact. And I, I, that is such an accurate quote. And so I want you to talk to me about that quote and kind of how that's helped you in this process of healing, both as a Christian, mm -hmm. you know, as, you know, a black man, but also just, you know, as a man, because one thing with us is we have a tendency to hide a lot of the things we go yeah. through. Yeah. We have a very bad, uh, we have a very toxic ideology when it comes to like manhood, which is, you know, you just handle things, you just figure yeah. it out. Even no if weakness, exactly, no you can't yeah. show any weakness and we're rappers. So we also understand like, you know, we got to be the best. We can't, they can't show any type of frailties. We can't show off any type of uh, weakness. We can't show any chinks in our armor because the minute yeah. that happens, you know, somebody's going to, you know, get above us. Even in Christian hip hop, I mean, there's a competitive aspect because it's rap. So talk to me a little bit of how you were able to go through a process where culture would have us not to communicate these things. Mm -hmm. And even though culture is kind of shifting in that regard, but still, there's still that expectation that like you're not allowed to have trauma you're not allowed yeah, to express if you have trauma you're not allowed to express it. you just got to yeah. figure it out talk to me about that for sure man so uh to in terms of that quote you can't hear what you're not real about just to build some context around that um as we're kind of building this timeline of events uh, so taking it back to the the end of 2020 uh, when i did start to realize like okay i'm not i'm not okay something's going on throughout that whole year man i had been uh communicating with a few people mm -hmm. uh one specifically being my girlfriend of course letting her know like yeah, I'm just not feeling it today or I'm just feeling off. But I just, you know, I, I had attributed it that to just, it's the pandemic. They're killing black people left and right. I'm at this job. I hate, it's just all these things. I'm like, it's just a phase. I'll get through it. You know, brush it off. That's what I'm used to doing. Yeah. Um, and it was her uh, towards the end of that year when I did realize, okay, something's off. And I was talking to her. She was like, I mean, you can't hear what you're not real about. So you got to figure out what's causing this and we got to acknowledge it. And you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it was really her right. uh, providing that last push to like, you really need to like dive in to see what's going on. Cause I really had no idea. Um, so big shout out to her. 
Um, no, um, praise God, man. For sure. Women praise definitely God make us better. <laughs> facts, man. So that quote came from her. Um, but tying it into what you had just mentioned about, especially for us as men, um, the whole idea of not really taking time to embrace or process the things that bother us on any level for the, for the fact that, you know, we just are conditioned, I feel, to uh, just be macho, you know what I'm saying? And like, I know for some of my homies growing up, their dads would literally tell them like, don't show no weakness. Don't let nobody mm-hmm. see you cry, you know, things like that. For me, it wasn't like that, but it was more so, um, man, just really watching my dad, like how he operated. Like he was a very hands to the plow, keep your head down, get it done. You know, he's working, he's in the military. So he working like getting up at 4 a.m., mm-hmm. coming back 5 p.m., doing it again. You know what I'm saying? Never seen the man pout, never seen the man complain. I'm sure he was tired behind closed doors, but I think he was just trying not to let me and my sister see that. But to me as a kid, it translated like, yo, you just got to keep your head down, keep pushing, shake it off. keep, You know what I'm saying? Right. And so getting into my adult life, all the things that as a child that might have bothered me that I didn't really take into account, all the things as a teenager that might have bothered me that I didn't take into account, it all came up during that year because I was forced to just sit and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I think, I think that, more so uh was the root of where that mental decline came from obviously the other three things i mentioned in that letter uh kind of was like the 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 thing that tipped the scale but mm-hmm. it was a buildup of that man so it was like getting to that point i was just like yo i can't i can't go back here once i got out of it and it's caused me to completely uh just tear down that ideology of you know you, you you're a man you don't you don't feel you know nothing can 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 uh damage you or uh you just gotta shake stuff off all that is very toxic and it's very unhealthy and so it's, it's forced me to, to just move on past all of that no that's good and for me at least in my experience i think there is something to be said like as a married man there's something to be said of knowing like hey that my wife is dependent on me to be strong and mm-hmm. to be a strength for her and things like that and so in some respect i can really appreciate because like growing up i didn't always look at myself as like a strong person in any regard i had an older brother to look to i had other people that could be strong for me but when those things kind of started to fall about apart that's when i started to really realize like man like i gotta be strong like i have Mm -hmm. to be a protector you know i have to learn how to be you know a man in that regard and so a lot of cases i started to do similar to a lot of guys that starts to suppress feelings and things like that but what i started to realize was i started losing my happiness and i wasn't enjoying life like I should because I realized you know what I'm suppressing how I feel and I'm not yeah. actually feeling better and things aren't getting better and right. things didn't get better until I started uh speaking on those things and I started yeah. to see a difference even yeah. if I didn't have the right perspective or I was wrong even if it took me being corrected me verbalizing how I felt mm-hmm. and saying like I'm not okay or saying hey this is not okay what I'm going through or this situation how it currently is or this place in life I'm in is not okay. Yeah. Those little things really made a difference as far as how aggressive I was and, you know, trying to find ways to change, how aggressive in praying, aggressive in finding help, having more conversations. Exactly. A lot of things started to shift when I really, you know, put that out there. And um, I feel like that's a huge area where, like, I think the church sometimes can take the L. And so that's where I want to kind of lead into next is mm-hmm. like when we talk about American Christians, because I feel like a lot of what we're going to talk about going forward in this conversation is really something that's unique to our country when it comes to Christians mm-hmm. and any yeah. uh, place where there are people that are a little bit more well off, so to speak. And so mm-hmm. can be a little bit more complacent and like have a false pretense of faith. But I want to ask you, um, do you feel like Christians in this country specifically value real transparency from christians meaning like someone telling you where they're at even yeah. if they may be in a place that's like man this is a scary that's a scary place <laughs> man that's all oh, you trying to shake the table i like it <laughs> no nah, i mean yeah i feel like american uh Christ, american christianity and, and our churches don't value it as much as we should because i personally i go to a, to a church where that's something that's like pushed um, you know, amongst a, a lot of other things that I think are really best good that the the in general, a lot of other churches and spaces might not. Um, you know what I'm saying? It's it's very inclusive of like ensuring we're all educated about things like mental health. A lot of things that like generations before us just either did A didn't know about or B, you know what I'm saying, suppressed due to that that ideology we we're just talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but I feel like one of the reasons why a lot of people don't feel the the desire or need to like tap into the things that are bothering them or not, or even just acknowledging them is mm-hmm. because they feel like they won't have support. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And, um, I think that if us as a church body would make it a point to say, A, going through things like depression, feeling anxiety, these are actually normal things. These aren't like right. abnormal things. You know what I'm saying? I think we, we, it's like this, we have this like stereotypical view that gets pushed to like, if you're going through these things, something's wrong with you when really mm-hmm. so, it's not necessarily you It's just life. Like life is hard. <laughs> Sin is in the world. It's going to be tough. And, and mm-hmm. I mean, you look all throughout the Bible, different mighty people of God were, were at low points. Like I'm thinking about Elijah it literally was like asking God, can you just kill me? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like what you, what you've given me to do is too hard. Can you just kill me? And it, it's in that moment where you release um, everything that you're feeling and you're real about, you know what I'm saying? What's hurting you and you empty that out. God can just fill you up. And that's literally my testimony, man, going through it. Like once I got to the point of one acknowledging and realizing what was happening. Cause I, when I tell you, I was like so unaware of the fact that like I was depressed, mm-hmm. like it's, it's terrible. The ignorance was terrible. <laughs> able to, to just be real about it and vocalize it to people I trusted, get prayer, talk to God. I could literally feel him just filling me back up with with a renewed me you know what i'm saying so no nah, praise god for that yeah that's that's the type of stuff that you know i like to hear um yeah because some people get in those places and they get stuck there and it's not to say necessarily that like you have just like you were in a hole and now you're not out of it it's like no it's like right. i'm still keeping you know climbing out of certain Fact. things like i may it's be at a different place in in there but yeah. i'm still it's a lifelong process i didn't bro. i didn't just stay in the hole i didn't just yeah. stay in this place now i'm looking for ways to like both cope with it and then also how to use that to my advantage because sometimes yeah. i think i think that's where we get stuck sometimes is understanding that these things could now become like our superpower in a sense because we mm-hmm. see the world differently because of right, the mental yeah. health uh deficiencies we may have so now it's a level of empathy i wanted to pull up something i'm actually see if i can share it with you so that way you can kind of see it too because this really intrigued me and it really uh ties in with where i'm gonna go to next which is where in your letter you talked about deconstruction Mm -hmm. and i kind of want to talk to you a little bit about that because this kind of really this blew my mind i have been seeing this a lot of times but i actually took the time to dig into it recently but like a lot of people probably, whether they call it deconstruction or not, a lot of people are have in this country in particular with the different denominations, different groups have probably experienced some form of deconstructing, maybe yeah. not the essential things that someone would consider themselves a Christian with, but there is mm-hmm. a lot of deconstructing of things that just don't line up with the Bible or things that yeah. are just off. So yeah. when you talked about deconstruction in your letter, uh, what are some of the things that you found that were really dragging you down in your faith that you felt mm-hmm. you had to go through a process of deconstruction with? Yeah. For, so for me, and you know, I use that word specifically because I, like you said, it, it, had, it does have a stigma on it um, specifically regarding people who, you know, may be in the faith and, and are trying to uh, maybe further understand the faith and then along the way they find something that makes them maybe not believe anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, I feel like uh, that the action of doing that doesn't just mean that you're, you know, deconstructing necessarily faith for me, it was really just deconstructing my life. And so that deconstruction and, and reflection mm. really went hand in hand for me um, as far as really trying to figure out like what caused this, because right. I've never experienced any type of just mental decline uh, or anything like that in my whole life. This was literally the first time for me. Um, and, and it just, I don't know, it, it, it had me beh- beside myself. Cause I was just like, how, how did I get here? So for me, I was kind of just basically breaking down um, whether it's some of those ideologies of like, just mm-hmm. shrug it off and keep moving or looking back. Um, I remember, man, specifically, I was praying one uh, one night and just kind of just waiting on God, trying to hear from him. And as I'm sitting there praying about everything that's happening as far as my mental state at that time, these memories of like me as a child start flashing, like stuff like when I was really young, uh, you know, my dad was deployed. My mom was trying to go back to school. So I was mm-hmm. like 12, 13, you know, getting me and my sister ready for school and getting this out. And just these little things from my childhood right. were popping up. And I'm like, what this got to do with anything? <laughs> like, why did <laughs> like, and, and I started to realize like, yo, all this is stuff that I've never took time to process and like let myself feel about. Mm-hmm. 
And there was some negative feelings attached to those things that I realized. And that, you know, just kind of started filling the cup up. So for me, deconstructing was specifically breaking down my life um, from my childhood up to now, everything I could remember, and, and just seeing what things led to to now. So a question I had just as I was kind of listening to your music, like when we think about like the different things in society and things like that in mm -hmm. the context of like deconstruction, was there anything that you were witnessing or even like seeing online from people like Christians, even while you were going through like different attacks of your faith? Was mm -hmm. there anything that made you really like question like how practical it was to be a Christian in today's mm -hmm. society with what you were seeing? And then also with the numbers I just showed you uh, from this Barna study where 6% of Amer like American Christians, so to speak, don't have a biblical worldview. Yeah. Man, that, can you still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I say it definitely brought up some questions. And I think the main question was like, what God are people serving? It was confusing to me. Um, right. Specifically going through uh, everything racial injustice wise in the year 2020. Um, you know, of course, being a young black man, I was very, very vocal about it. And for some reason, that that year of events, every year is something that happens, unfortunately. But that year of events specifically, like, I don't know, it just really rocked me. Like, it hit mm -hmm. me in a place that it hadn't hit me before. And that might have been because I wasn't as strong mentally as, you know, maybe in years past. And, you know, all that uh, fatigue was on me. But I was just being really vocal um, about what I felt was just basic stuff, especially as, as a Christ follower. Like, uh, you know, what I'm saying like empathizing with those that are hurting and and taking time to really try to understand what's going on versus politicize what's going on things like that and i'm just getting the majority of flack and pushback i got on like posts or dms was from people that i knew that were christians and and it was mm -hmm. like they're like you know why are you pushing this agenda or uh everything isn't about race i'm like wow well, what are you even talking about and it made me it really, I thank God for this. It really brought me to the point of fully separating God from those who claim him, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like a lot of people have issues uh, separating the, the, the people, you know what I'm saying, of God and God just due to a variety of reasons. But everything that frustrated me with the individuals that, that were talking to me and trying to debate me and all these things, <laughs> I just had a moment of like, man, this isn't God. Like God isn't doing this, it's the it's people, it's man, and man's gonna fall short, you know what I'm saying? And, and I had to just just lean more into God versus away. And I'm very thankful that that you know I was able able to do that because stuff like that was turning away a lot of people that I knew. Uh, mm -hmm. They're like, wow, if these people who claim to to worship this, the God that I do, they don't even they don't see me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So how how could this even be? And for me, it was just like this is sad. That, that people feel this way, um, but but they're not God at the end of the day, so. No, exactly. No, that's that's good. That's, man, I'm just like the, the wisdom that God gave you even in the midst of that because yeah. a lot of times when emotions are high, you know, logic mm -hmm. can really go down and a lot of times we can really just, uh, we miss out on God because of yeah. all the other external factors. Now, one thing that, and then another thing too, for me, whenever I've seen that, because I'm not, I have a lot of feelings about stuff, but <laughs> yeah. I'm not always like I express a lot. That's why I started this channel because I really wanted a space where I could talk about these things uh, from a Christian, you know, black Christian's perspective. I don't shy away from any of those things. Sure. You know, I don't care what anybody thinks. You know, I, I'm not going to put my race above who I am in Christ right. as yeah, identity, but I'm not going to ignore it either. Or I'm not going to ignore the realities the people that, you know, share, you know, my race feel. Yeah. So I personally... Um, oh, let me see. Oh, I, I took me off the screen just in case it caused any issues, but I oh, think word. this shit, it's just sure. not that I'm recording. <laughs> yeah, I'll put I it up just so sure. it's not weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I made my channel in a way purposely where you know that like God, his word, all those things are in the forefront. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I present grace and truth. And I always look at things from that framework. Like yeah. something yeah. can be truthful, but... If I don't present grace to it as well, then you get mm -hmm. into legalism. It's like, no, the Bible says this, the Bible says that. You're just throwing the Bible at people yeah. with no grace, no context of people's life circumstances or no other factors. Yeah. And so you miss out on the line. Then if you put too much grace out, 
then next thing you know, you're allowing people to, you know, you're allowing people to stay in, you know, a messy situation mm -hmm. or you're allowing them to be like complacent and really miss out on truly what God could have for them. And yeah. so I try to, I try to use both. And uh, I do agree with you that like, I think a lot of people really show where they are in their faith in, yeah, in the most negative of true colors. A lot of them show that they really, <laughs> yeah. they have, you know, some shady and questionable, you know, place. And they may not even have true faith. And so that yeah. was something that I got a lot of empathy for. But what I also was surprised by, and I think this got lost in the conversation because we're always so quick to like, you know, the people that are wrong are usually the loudest. But I saw a lot of people that came around that I didn't think would as far as like realizing where they were off in maybe in mm -hmm. their understanding of yep. what black, not even just black Christians, but I think because it, they started to see it hit in effect, you know, black Christians who may not have spoken out. My people like myself, even like in my circles of uh, believers, I talk yeah. about these things, you know, with black, white, whatever race and things like that. But like really getting to see uh, people of the same, you know, faith that they know they can speak to. Like when you know somebody, like if I know somebody that's white or if someone white knows somebody like me and they know how I live my day to day life and mm -hmm. how I um, honor God with it and they see the frustration or we see the issues that yeah. opens up a door for conversation. And yeah. then it also helps us to see like, OK, maybe we missed a mark in this regard. Maybe we weren't as clear or maybe we gave a little bit too much. Like, so I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. um, Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter is a great slogan, but what happened was that it was conflated and coincided with an organization that we may not fully agree with, right. like yeah. outside of the slogan. So because of that, that yeah. a lot of people only view the slogan as the organization. Mm -hmm. And so immediately anything that was spoken was attached to that. And that wasn't just like, uh, accidental thing that was a very intentional thing politically yeah. to try to downplay anybody that has exactly. any legitimate concern so we all exactly. we can see that but there are people that genuinely don't know and so i had uh people who genuinely would ask how can you support an organization that is promoting the dysfunction of the nuclear family these different things and so what i would say was like wait well I'm not, I'm not, I was like, I'm not going to hold you. I haven't even looked at the organization yeah, because me me affirming that statement has nothing to do with the organization. And I would hope exactly. any... And I was like, I don't know where these things come from, but most of the time, a lot of the different things that we believe and promote get co-opted by someone that we don't even agree with. So mm -hmm. I remember people using the word woke in a completely different context than people use it now. And mm -hmm. now it's become... The word woke is an all-encompassing term for everything that is just like um, even bad faith acts to bring equality, <laughs> just you yeah. know, corporate acts. Yeah. Like it's, it's gotten really wrecked. It don't even mean what people it use. Like mean, it just mean that you're enlightened. The early twenty ten. Somebody wants you to be enlightened to whatever that it, is. <laughs> that black really people didn't mean that. none of the stuff that people are calling woke now. Black people meant even Christians. Like people are using it. All woke was for us was an extension of the idea of social consciousness. So mm -hmm. you used to say your conscience. Like that was all people would say, you know, your conscious. Yeah. That was the phrase. But then it turned into woke eventually. And that's how people would use it the same way. It didn't mean that you would subscribe to whatever the latest uh, thing that conservatives didn't like was. It just meant yeah. simply put that, hey, I am aware of the different things that operate, you know, behind the scenes sometimes covertly and mm -hmm. sometimes just right out in the open and things like that and it was really that simple it wasn't really that deep of a concept but it became like something that was much more <laughs> problematic that was like yeah now it's your marxist now it's all these other yeah, things. All these things and that's yeah. ten that tends to be the common narrative is and christians seem to fall for that very easily whenever someone is taking something that is good faith and turning it into something that's just twisted and yeah. what do you think about that Man, I think, I think it's like a two sided coin because there are is a side of the coin where it's people who are just genuinely ignorant. And during mm -hmm. that time, um, you know, because I also dropped a, a single called Both Them and a visual for that. That uh, my whole intent was to educate and bring awareness to the the true reality. Like I wanted people to really feel what that feels like as a black person in America. Um, and I had a, 
I, I was getting ready for the pushback. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, you got the people under the rap to the comments and, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> I was ready, boy. I was ready, boy. And uh, But I didn't get that. I got people DMing me, you know, in private and stuff. Just like, man, I every year I see these things happen. But this made me feel it. And, and feeling it has changed everything for me. <laughs> and I was like, man, there, there's, there's truly a side of individuals who, who are just ignorant. And, and uh, you know, there's the other side of folks who are willingly ignorant, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I think what was really tough for me that year was deciphering when to engage or, wh- or when to recognize that this is going to be a fruitful conversation with someone who's really just trying to learn. Or is this just going to be turn into an argument because I didn't have the mental capacity to argue at all. It was exactly. to the point with the argument. It's like every time someone tried to push back, it was just pushing me more into, into just feeling numb. Like I think out of all of everything that was bothering me that year, seeing racial injustice in, in the like the the high amount of numbers that was going on, the the ways in which it was happening, like it was like more regular, regular everyday stuff that individuals were doing and getting killed doing, sleeping, going for a jog uh man trying to sleep off being became drunk, indefensible so drunk, you know what i'm saying like trying to do just normal regular some right things and it was just like it just made me go really numb so i just didn't have the capacity to deal with any of the arguments and stuff but the people who did genuinely come to me and were like man my perspective is changing i just have some questions that that, that gave me some hope they gave me some hope yeah and there's a lot more people out there too like there's people that don't want to ask questions because they don't want to be called, considered like woke or things like that. Like now there's yeah. like bullying. So that kind of Or even the how you don't know to, yet. Yeah. That shifts to, to a whole nother thing. <laughs> I had to watch myself with that too. I ain't gonna hold you. I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I had to watch myself with the whole like, if you don't know by now, I, I don't know how you don't know. Because yep. that's just, you know what I'm saying? It's on the news every year. Every Sunday, People don't know. That's what I was saying. Because there's still, we, there's still people out here. It's just not their reality, man. Yeah, and we've you know um, created boogeyman terms. We've created... Um, echo chambers and it's the same like you could like we all have echo chambers that we're tempted to be in because they yeah, affirm everything we agree with affect my reality there, there are times yeah. exactly there are times where like i hear stuff that are affirming to like black people and i'm like oh yeah this is it this is it and then i don't cross examine those because it affirms what i would and how i yeah. think like my worst suspicions but then i really look into it deeper and i'm like you know what I was a little bit more prone to believe this was mm-hmm. bad or this was exactly the way that I was suspected it to be in because I've been so many affirmations I felt like that I've seen. So it can go yeah. both ways in that regard. But I think um, this kind of leads well into my next question, which is we hear a lot about cancel culture mm. in this world. Like people yeah. are talking about it like crazy I and mean, it's a real thing we won't deny that i'm not sure i don't think you would either but i want to get your thoughts on cancel culture and i want to ask you what do you think about this statement cancel culture started in the church the american church specifically what do you think about that oh hold on let me process that for a second i ain't never heard that <laughs> quote before that's cancel culture started oh, in the american church that's deep that's deep now let me so just like for a little bit of like clarification on it like was the context of that quote surrounding more so like how people would like deny people maybe certain like uh roles or opportunities or different things within the church like so in that context christians specifically in the american or you can even take it to protestant Mm -hmm. the context of protestants like the whole word you know protestant like protest like protesting like i guess you could say catholic church or whatever and things like Mm -hmm. that so the whole movement of protestant which many of our denominations even non-denominational churches stem from this Protestant Reformation, which mm-hmm. is all about protesting. So somebody oh, getting like canceled. The so there's only exactly oh, there's okay, been canceling all you. throughout the history of like wow. the Protestant Reformation. Yeah. But on a more like relevant level, like Christians are quick to cancel something if like mm-hmm. they see somebody uh like Lecrae wore a skull on the shirt and stuff and now he's demonic. Yeah. We're canceling Lecrae or Lecrae uh accidentally uh performed at a democratic uh, rally for a yeah. specific, and he didn't that he wasn't. They later came out and said he wasn't aware that it was partisan in nature. Mm-hmm. He just was asked to perform at a go out to vote event, but then right. later found out that it was partisan and that yeah. it was for a particular candidate. People just like, and people never saved. People just continue like, to this day say like you know you supported this candidate and all of that stuff. So that's just one example. People are quick to cancel other Christians. Mm-hmm. That type of culture. 
I so did. I want to get your thoughts on what you think about the statement cancel culture started in the American church. Yeah, no, I think I mean I think that's spot on. I think that's spot on. If you you know you can look at it from a historical standpoint, but even now, um, in modern day times, with a situation like that with Lecrae and how people are just really it seems almost that people are just waiting and like praying on the downfall of their other or people that should be their brothers and sisters in Christ. Exactly. Um, and it's like, I feel like it stems from a, almost like a holier than thou. Like if I can find something wrong with you, I'm gonna feel better by myself versus me just addressing what's wrong with me. You know what I'm saying? Taking that to God. Um, because it's, it's just things that really shouldn't matter. Like Paul literally goes on a whole rant, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In his, one of his letters about, why are y'all basically basically saying paraphrase, but why are y'all majoring in the minor stuff? Stuff mm-hmm. that really isn't gonna affect your eternity. You know what I'm saying? Um, and 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 we see that often, and that for sure is a direct link to to cancel culture because it's, it's in essence what you're doing. Um, and, and that's something that really should have no place here. It should be, I feel like our space specifically as Christians should be a, a space of trying to understand, especially from yeah. people that we've seen prove. I don't want to say prove their faith, but for lack of better words, prove their faith time and time again and, and do yeah, you've seen work fruit for the them. kingdom. You've seen fruit from, and that's a better way to put it. Yeah. And so it's like, why don't, why are we so quick to judge versus like, I don't get it. I want to understand, you know what I'm saying? So exactly. Yeah. I think it ties in with celebrity culture too. in a, in a lot of ways, because you see this a lot for, I guess you would say celebrity Christians or Christians that have any type of mainstream appeal where their yeah. faces out there you see this a lot more with that and you see this in smaller mm-hmm. settings too but i noticed that a lot with like celebrity culture where they like you completely discard the humanity of someone that mm-hmm. still they have a family they have children they have a yeah. church that they're, they're, they're a part of things like that and you you've dehumanized them because they have some type of talent or gifting so on and yeah. so forth and i've seen that a lot and i just thought that that was interesting i heard it from I think it was Ruslan that it said that before, and it really made me think. So mm-hmm. I did a deep dive and really looking at a lot of church history, specifically in this country. I'm like, man, like we cancel a whole bunch of things. Like <laughs> yeah, we just don't we, necessarily call it even <laughs> prohibition, for example. Like you know the the idea basically the, the determining that you know it was bad in any context to sell, you know, allow the sale of alcohol, and mm-hmm. it was prohibited. And crime went crazy. The mob, it created all type of yeah. mafia type of behavior, all type of things like that. Now, yeah. I'm not trying to say pro-alcohol against the anti or anything. But what yeah. I'm saying is a lot of these things stemming from religious movements and yeah. what ended up happening as a result of it, it, it was so bad that that was one of, I think that was still to this day in the history. And I have to go back and check if I'm using the right terminology when I say amendment. That was the only one that was repealed. In the history hey, of the I country. Think it was. I believe so. If I if I pay attention to history class, I think so. Yeah, the only one ever. Yeah, yeah. Because the 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 uh, basically this idea of cancel culture, it can backfire in many ways. So I Yo, think we're called yep. to show grace even mm-hmm. in disagreement because we have to also understand keeping the main thing the main thing. So you have yeah. primary issues, things that matter. So if anything diminishes, I guess, like who Jesus is or like mm-hmm. the really primary things that matter as far as one's salvation, yep. those things we don't compromise on. We don't we don't debate. But like when we, when we start to talk about like more secondary things like, OK, should you have a tattoo or <laughs> yeah. should um, the one yeah. artist from Maverick City say, hey, yeah, I look forward Lil to Nas. hearing Lil Nas X. Yeah. Like little yeah. petty things like. Yeah, you can disagree. You can say that probably wasn't wise given who he is and like where what he brings to that atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Could he have uh, handled it differently? Sure. Was it sinful? Not. That I feel wow. like I feel like a lot of Christians reach, and yeah. so like I, I I did a video talking about right. that, and like right. in the comments going back and forth with someone just saying like this was an opportunity. This person could have spread the gospel. Mind you, they, they performed a worship song, I believe, that night, I'm too. Saying, I was like, did nobody watch their actual performance? People completely forgot about the worship song. Even with uh, that, they was mad because they was like, why is P. Diddy on the stage? And, or and like when they did uh, the BET Awards and all that. And I mean, just like exactly. to your point, like, I feel like the whole idea when it comes to cancel culture existing within the church, it's like this idea of trying to force our beliefs on individuals uh, that may not believe um, mm-hmm. or even like forcing our own personal convictions within our faith that may have may just be for us um, because, you know, 
in the Bible talks about Christian liberties and things like that, and where yeah. it might be beneficial for someone to do X, Y, and Z, even though it's not sinful, it might not be for you because it might cause exactly. them to walk into sin. Um, so this whole idea of just, again, like you said, not, not showing grace or not, not being quick to show grace, being quick to try to understand, but instead, Oh, I, I know, I know I'm gonna force this, force this. And, and it's <laughs> exactly. like, all that a lot of that caused backlash. Like prohibition was a prime example. It yep. hell broke loose because folks was trying to force something versus saying, Hey, we're going to take a stand. We're not going to partake in this. And here's why, but we're not going to try to like push this on you. And I've seen the most fruit and just my relationships with non-believers um, when they just feel comfortable of like, man, you, you draw a line in the sand, you know what I'm saying? There's certain things that I just see, like you don't move it a certain way, but you still show me like love and you still try to understand me and it exactly. makes me want to understand you. And so it's like a reciprocation, you know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. People get that. I mean, people really respond well to that. I found. So I agree with you on that. I got one more question that I'm going to leave you with. And that is, um, kind of the, like tied together everything we just talked about with like race and like deconstruction. But what's a healthy view of race and reconciliation mm -hmm. that we can apply as uh, followers of Christ in this yeah. time that that really allows for conversations to be had about these things mm -hmm. without it becoming oh you're this you're that like what's a healthy way all of us can engage in these at least in your experience yeah I'm a that's a very good question. And if I if I could, I kind of want to break it into like three parts as far That's as fine. three groups of people um, I want to like give advice to. I'm going to start with my black brothers and sisters. Um, I believe a healthy view for us looks like um, one, being aware of our limits. Because um, I know during especially 2020, it's like every time you went on Twitter, or on Instagram, there was a video of somebody getting <laughs> shot and killed. Yeah, and that's the, that's not no, that's, that's real. Us, man. Like it's not healthy for us. And there's there was a time where I just couldn't engage with people, even people that were genuinely just trying to understand. I just couldn't do it. I couldn't bring myself to it um, because it, I, it's just so much hurt. Um, and in those moments, I had to just you know I had this like link <laughs> with a whole bunch of information. I was just like, mm -hmm. I'm just not in the place to talk about this. But here's some resources, you know. So we we can we can uh, that's good. You know, aware of our limits is one. But also, if you're in a place to discuss and talk. Um, as a Christian, again, we're going back to this grace and understanding, not uh, jump into assumptions when somebody maybe reaches out to you or wants to have a conversation, but just going into that conversation open minded and responding based on what they present. If they are presenting that like, hey, I, I don't I could care less what you say. This is what I feel. Exit that conversation for your own health. Exit that conversation. But be open just in case it is somebody who, who really is genuinely wanting to be a, like a real life ally. Uh, and, and so that you can be be of you know be a resource in that moment. Um, switching gears over to my my white brothers and sisters or any other uh, group race group um, who necessarily doesn't experience the reality of of uh, black people in America. Um, you need to have grace and understanding too. Yeah, everything is not it's not we're not talking politics, man. We're talking real life. We're talking people's moms, daughters, sons fathers real life um the the your the way I, I put it when we were doing the both of them video is like you look at uh black people that you know personally that that might be your friends it could be them god forbid exactly. but it could be Man. Them. like if you think about it like that think about it like that that's all i'm gonna say um but also uh don't yeah just just don't be so quick to to jump to conclusions um, and then as far as just, I want to address just everybody overall, uh, we gotta, we gotta work together. Like there's no conversations are good debates, arguments. They don't do anything for us because that's when other emotions get involved in, in the whole, uh, the regulation needed emotionally and, reg and mentally to engage in a fruitful conversation, to work towards a solution, to work towards change. Um, it, it's very hard for that to happen when we're angry at each other for not understanding mm -hmm. because we just want to come in there with our own, you know what I'm saying, like thoughts and, and things like that. So I think all of those things, that's a lot, <laughs> but all of those things uh, are like a recipe, I think, for us to actually produce some type of fruitful change in our in our local bodies. Oh, I love it, man. I, I agree with everything you said. I don't even have nothing to add to it because you addressed, <laughs> you, hit, you covered all sides. I think that's healthy. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like 
people don't really think much. You just kind of jump into it. You just find yourself yeah. in those situations. Very, You're like, <laughs> it's an emotional response. I mean, yeah. you know, you see somebody, you know, as a black person, you see somebody just wrongfully, unjustly take someone who looks like you's life. You just want to. <clears throat> yeah, and then all the side of the coin. We also think in binaries too. Like, so yeah. the minute you see somebody white do something to a black person or a person of color in it's any like respect, like, that's, racist. You, that's how our minds work. So we also have to be sober and saying like, okay, let more information come out. Uh, that that's, people usually so hard, people though. usually use that in the most triggering and it's unempathetic so way. But I'm saying for like us as individuals, we have yeah. to say that to ourselves. Like, okay, I do need to see more before I jump to conclusions. Yeah. This looks so bad or it sounds bad mm-hmm. before the video comes out if we can even i couldn't get myself to watch videos after a while i gave yeah, up same. on it personally I so i just didn't try even engage in a lot of them but when i did see the video yeah. and like if i really wanted to find information then i would and i would just um you know i would just like say god you know bring all these things to light um bring justice as you see fit and maybe you know your let your will be done and i'm you know obviously not content when I feel justice isn't brought. We understand the legal system doesn't always play the, yeah. the way we want it to and things like that. But ultimately, we just have to be sober with it. That's the biggest takeaway I have from you is like across the board, everybody should enter sober, yeah. soberly. If we're going to get interject our opinions or even what we think is facts, you know, uh, I think we have to be sober in understanding like, hey, even if I think this is factual, especially for followers of Christ. I can't control people outside of that mm-hmm. demographic, but especially as a follower of Christ, if I'm going to interject my opinion into something, I need to do it soberly and also have to be sober enough to say, is this going to be edifying to set demographic? Are they going to even yeah. receive me to begin with? If I don't think they will receive me, um, is there any way I can change the tone of how this comes off that yeah. they may receive me? And if the answer is no, then it's like, okay, this is not the for season sure. for me to do it. Some people I've said, they need to change up their approach. Like instead of tweeting about stuff, maybe you need to go on YouTube and in long form express why mm. you feel mm. all this demographic of the population is deceived in a very yeah. loving way and really point out, cite your sources, show yeah. information, yeah. give an alternative opinion. I find in long form conversation, we can flush out a lot of these things a lot better. And a lot of times you'll find that you agree a lot more than you disagree and the things you disagree on are a product of worldviews and like how you see the world. And some of that isn't malicious, but it also doesn't always come off right because Mm -hmm. people don't always understand empathy and like, okay, even if I think this is uh, very clear, because there are times where I disagree with black people on something like, I'm not sure this was that, but I'm not going to voice that. This ain't the time for me to voice my opinion on that either, because I don't think they're going to receive. I'm going to wait if I'm going to wait. And then a lot of times when more information comes out. Like, there have been times where people started rallying over a police shooting only to find out, oh, this guy was shooting, he shot them. Yeah, <laughs> and they didn't know that. Time, yeah. And that happened in That's Chicago, weird. I think, last year. And I was like, people got to calm down before they react to a killing or things yeah. like that and be sober because people were ready to tear up the city. Then, like, an hour later, they find out that, oh, this guy actually shot uh, one of the police officers or he did, something was actually done that was wrong on the part of the person. Mm-hmm. And people already jumped out the window with opinions and saying police brutality, all these different things. So I think we yeah. have, I think it's wise in general for us all to just be sober and be very careful with our word, a choice of words in those times. Mm-hmm. And also be careful in how we articulate uh, bigger messages yeah. to bigger masses and things like that. But man, I for love sure. everything you shared. Uh, yeah, man. Give you the final words. Is there anything else you would like to add? Yeah, man, before we go, I mean, I just, just along the lines of what you were saying, I think uh, it's very, very tough at times to uh, kind of take a step back and allow yourself to to process and get get information because we've seen the same thing happen just so many times. It's like a and, pattern. And it's like, you know, I mean, it looked like a duck, walked like a duck, quacked like a duck. It's more than likely <laughs> a duck, but we still don't know for sure until we get the information. And so in those moments, I think you can... Like you said, there's a very uh, loving, edifying way to voice your frustrations and be direct. Uh, you know, I keep bringing it back to that Botham video, but I feel like that was a very raw, direct, yep. kind of graphic, just bringing folks into to my reality. But it was done in a way where I wasn't trying to bash none of my white brothers and sisters or, uh, you know, I'm saying things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it was real respectful. Yeah, man, I would I would just encourage folks to 
as a rule of thumb in life in general, I think as kids, we're always taught, you know, if you get angry, you don't just react by hitting somebody or doing something <laughs> out of anger. You got to sit no, for a second. So I encourage everybody to try to sit for a second. And then that way we can have some regulated uh, conversations and that, that are really working towards making a change. So, yeah, man. No, I love it, man. Cam, you have always been a very sober voice. I feel like on social media, my experience, uh, I followed you probably since at least 2019, probably 2018. Yeah. Uh, probably didn't interact with you for many years until after, <laughs> which is yeah. cool and all. But I've been able to kind of see your growth as an artist. I've been able to witness how you move. I love how you approach these type of things. I think you're really thoughtful. I actually want to hear more from you Dog, in yeah. these areas because I feel like as you're growing in it, I feel like you have a lot more that yeah. you can offer in these conversations. And I, I think you're really you're really self-aware and I think you're balanced enough to where you can really help people to see things yeah, from the other side and also empathize with things that like, yeah, I mean, we can both agree here that this isn't right, but mm -hmm. this is where I'm coming from in my view of it. And I think yeah. I think that's huge. And that's kind of, we need more people like that. And we also need to highlight those people that do these things. And so, yeah, you oh, and Culture man. Villains, I love that you all are, unapologetic in both your faith, but also in your desire uh, to help out a population of the of this country that you feel like is marginalized or deals yeah. with things that yeah. don't voices aren't spoken to and you all aren't afraid. I know you all try not to be political, but you're on, all aren't afraid sometimes to dabble and have conversations yeah. and to, with to those things. things. I mean, if, if the people of God ain't going, the, the, those in the world that we're trying to sway, you know, towards the kingdom and direct to Jesus, these are the things um, and I'm not, you know, obviously race, politics, uh, anything that's trending on TikTok, Twitter, like, you know, all these different things. Yeah. I feel like a lot of, of Christians like, that's like, oh, I don't want nothing to do with that. That's all we got to talk about it. We got to, we got to get in there, bro. We, we got to get in there. That don't mean we got to conform and, and wild out and, you know, go against our beliefs, but we got to get in there. And that's what CV, that's what culture violence is really all about. Um, so, man, I appreciate that. That means a lot. Definitely, man. I hope to hear some more from you. For sure, I definitely man. do, man. But yeah, all right, guys. That... Go check out that to whom it may concern. Yep. I'm healing double single out now. Oh man, I'm, I'm just very, very, it's very special. It's very special. Two songs to me, definitely. I will have everything linked up. We're going to get this all up on YouTube as a full piece. Uh, we'll fill in some of the gaps. But yes, this has been Cam. Make sure you follow him yeah. on Instagram, Twitter. I believe it is Cam Raps. Yep, K H A M Raps. Yep, Sorry. you got it. Follow him on there. Make sure you check out his double single. It's really good. It's really thoughtful and inspirational, too. It definitely blessed me. I know it'll bless you all. So go ahead and check that out. And before you head out, hit that thumbs up on this video. And if you Do haven't that. subscribed yeah. to the channel, what are you doing? Go I mean, ahead and subscribe. This conversation we just had, it was a dope conversation, <laughs> man. Like, y'all, this is y'all, it's more coming from this man. So please subscribe. Absolutely. Hit that thumbs up on this video. And man, y'all take it easy. Aggressive with the message when I finesse. Yeah. Been trying to be a blessing since adolescence. Let's go. Been trying to serve the master with all my messes. And kicking it cause I'm messy, but yeah. always getting contested. Yeah.